Okay, we left off on number 20, um, which is the start of chapter 4. Now remember, section 4.1 is dealing with probability distributions, which are in the form of a table, so a PDF, um, a probability distribution function. So to qualify for a um, PDF, remember that your x's have to be discrete, which they are here, but then your probabilities have to add to be 1, and they also have to be between 0 and 1 inclusive. So if you look at this, you can notice right away that there's a negative probability, which means this does not qualify for a PDF. So that's going to be a no on that one. On the next one, what you're going to do is your x's are good. They're all discrete, which means they're whole numbers. So you're going to want to add your p of x is up. They're all between 0 and 1 or 0 and 1. So we're going to add um, 0 0.05 plus 0.1 plus 0.3 plus 0.55. And notice they do equal 1. So yes, this is a probability distribution. On this next one, um, same thing. We want to fill in the missing thing, so it does have to add to be 1. So you're going to add those together and find out what does the probability of 10 need to be to make this equal 1. So if you add the 4, 8, and 12 up, that equals 0 0.8, which means the probability of 10 needs to be 0 0.2. On this next one, it gives us a probability distribution, and you can check that by adding those up. Um, and you're just reading the table to answer the question. So the probability that x equals 4, we're going to go to our table 4, and it equals 0 0.044. When it asks for the x is greater than or equal to 4, you're going to add these three up, which would give you... 0 0.0724 and then for the probability that x is greater than 4 you're going to do everything greater than 4 which would be the 5 and the 6 so since 6 is 0 it's just going to be the 0 0.284 so on these pdfs just read your table and answer the questions from that um, on 24 notice that it's got 0 pluses which means that they are slightly above zero, but not enough to count towards your probability towards anything. So you would still use zero in those cases. So again, just answer these um, from your table. Now, when it says, um, does seven Mexican-Americans among, among 12 jurors suggest that the selection pro process discriminates against Mexican-Americans? Anything that is below 0 0.05 or 5% um, is going to be unusual. So if your answer to these are below 5%, then yes, that would be unusual to have seven Mexican-Americans. Um, now, number 25 is asking for the expected value which is the same thing as the mean or the average so when you see the words expected value it's asking for the mean now for a probability distribution function um, you can do this by the formula which is just you add the you multiply the x's by the probabilities and add that up or we can throw this into StatCrunch. You're just going to copy it, um, highlight everything, um, Control C will copy it, go over to StatCrunch, Control V in the first box, and it copies your table just like it is. And you're going to go to Stat Calculators Custom. And that is on your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize that. You just need to know when to use it. So Stat Calculators Custom. And your values are in the first column, which is var1, and weights are in the second column, which is var2, and compute. And it gives you your mean or expected value. Um, and like I said, this is not a hard formula. You could do that by hand. But in the next question, it's going to ask for standard deviation. 
and that is a little more complicated to figure out. So use your stat crunch to do that, or you can use it for both of these. So our mean would be 9.6. And then, like I said, on this next one, um, it wants it's checking to see if it's valid. So add those up, see if it equals one. This one does um, because the sum of the p of x is equal one, and they're all between zero and one inclusive. And then it wants the mean and the standard deviation. And then this symbol is variance, which is just standard deviation squared. So we're going to go back to StatCrunch. I'm going to clear that out and again, just copy it. Control C and then over in StatCrunch, do Control V. And like I said, the mean is not hard to figure out. You would just do 0 times 0.47, 1 times 0.34. 2 times 0.12 and 3 times 0.07 and add that up and that would give you your mean. But your standard deviation is kind of a complicated formula. So we're going to use stat crunch for that. And you go stat calculators custom var1, var2, var3, compute. And so that gives us 0.79 for our mean and what are we asked around to? Three decimal places. So we're going to have 0 0.909 for this. And make sure you cut it off. Even though the key has more, you want to round the way it tells you. And then variance is sigma squared, which is just standard deviation squared. So you can take this number, the 0 0.909, and square it. and that will give you your variance. Now it's a little off because they're using this whole number, but it'll it'll give you a little leeway on those rounding questions for, for ones like this. So use StatCrunch for that. This one too, fill out the table by, um, <clears throat> it tells you that you're playing a game. Um, if you win, you um, get your money back and $163. So that means your profit is 163 because you got your dollar back. If she didn't get her money back, that would be 162. And then you've got to find the probability of losing and winning. So um, she has to guess the suit each time. So that would mean, let me read, and the cards are replaced. So she would have to do 13 out of 52 four times in a row. So you can do that times itself four times, or you can put it in parentheses and raise it to the fourth power. So that's the probability of winning. And then the probability of losing would be one minus that. So you can do... one minus and you can just throw in hit answer and it'll throw in the answer so that's your probability of losing and we're rounding to four decimal places and then what's the long term expected and standard deviation once you have the table set up you can just throw that table in there you might have to just enter this one i'm not sure it'll copy it And then you would do your stat calculators custom again to get your expected profit and your standard deviation. Remember, expected is your mean. Um, this one is the same thing. It wants you to set up a table just like this one. Um, it gives you the probabilities, though. Just make sure that if it says loss, your value needs to be a negative. So a contractor is considering a sale that promises a profit of 47,000 with a probability of 0 0.84 or a loss, so that would be negative 17,500 with a probability of 0 0.16. So that would be your probability table and then the expected value would be your mean. So stat calculators custom again on that one. 
Um, on 29, we're moving into the binomial um, probabilities, which these, um, there's not a table. So remember, if there's a table, you're just reading the um, table to give you the probabilities. But for mean and standard deviation, you use stat crunch. On this one, um, it says 94% of the largest colleges and universities have some online offers. Offering. Suppose you randomly pick 35 such institution and let X be the number of institutions that offer distance learning courses. So um, this is binomial. What makes it binomial is they either offer it or they don't. So here we've got a B for binomial. So for notation, you have X and then a little squiggly with a capital B that tells you it's a binomial distribution. And then in the parentheses, your N, which is your sample size. So this would be 35 because we're randomly picking 35 institutions. And then in the next blank is your P, which is your probability of success. So here it's going to be 0.94 is your probability of success. Now that's important because that's the information we're going to use in StatCrunch to find, um, and let me move this over so you can kind of see it. No, that didn't do it for me. There it is. Um, it's a B open parentheses, N comma P close parentheses. So that's what your notation looks like. Um, and then to answer all these questions, we're going to go over to StatCrunch. Um, you don't need this in here. It doesn't matter, but let's clear it out. We're going to go to Stat Calculators Binomial. So Stat Calculators Binomial. And it pulls up this screen. In N, we're going to put our 35. And then P, we're going to put the 0.94. And then, depending on what question it asks, will be what you do as your probability statement. So this, the first one is, what is the probability that exactly 31 institutions? So that's going to be equals 31. And compute, and your answer is in the last box, which is your probability. So we'll have a probability of 0 0.997 when it rounds up the... 6 will round up because the 7 is greater than 5, greater than or equal to 5. Now the next one it says, what's the probability that less than 31 institutions? So here you would do less than, and it computes the probability. And then just pay careful attention to the wording. This one says at most, so that means 31 is the most it could be, so that's going to be greater, less than, or equal to 31, would be at most 31. And then the last one, it says, what's the probability that between 29 and 32, including 29 and 32? So we're going to go up here. We're on standard right now. We're going to pick between, and it'll open up a double inequality. And we're going to do 29 to 32 inclusive, which means it includes it and compute. So that would give us the probability between those two and including those. So you're going to do that for 30. Most of the rest of these problems are similar to that. So just make sure you're plugging in your N and your P correctly, and then you stat crunch from there. Um, <clears throat> on number 36, um, it is asking you about the mean and the standard deviation. Now for a binomial, you do not use stat crunch. It's going to use the formulas. Um, mean is N times P. So your sample size times your probability and um, standard deviation is the square root of N times P times Q. Um, so if you want to, um, let me just, well, we'll just do them one by one. So here it says about 44% of the population is of a particular ethnic group. 190 people are randomly selected from this population. 
round all answers to three decimal places. So first you're going to convert the 44% to a probability, which would be just 0.44.